thank you for focus to organize this uh, webinar. I think this is a part of the change that we have now during the pandemic. Usually we are gathered gather in a certain place and uh, organize a seminar. But now we're trying to uh, find uh, the solution so that we also can exchange our uh, thought, uh, especially today about the, the food uh, situations in, in the world. So can you, uh, the, the host can present my <coughs> uh, presentation? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, next. Next, please. Yeah. Pandemic and impacts. Uh, the COVID nineteen virus is dramatically changed the economic, human relations, healthcare, transportation, education, and food system around the world. Impact also fell through across society. It's uh, no matter the places, north and the south uh, at this moment. The past international trade system, uh, free trade, especially on food, fall down since the supply chain is dis disturbing and increase in the cost of import and export. Next slide, please. And poor the hunger. I think uh, Deepa and also Walden already uh, share uh, some points uh, as well in the beginning, yeah. So we can see what happened in Indonesia as the the, the COVID nineteen pandemic strikes in Indonesian economy with almost three million people having lost their jobs and seventy uh, million at risk of losing income be incomes because of uh, physically uh, distancing. Many people, especially among the poor and informal workers are worried about escaping not only from the disease, but also from starvation. Before the pandemic, there were about 24 million poor people in Indonesia, or is uh, equivalent 9.22% uh, uh, of, of the 260 million Indonesian populations, according to Indonesian statistics projected that millions of people will fall into poverty and unemployment due to the pandemic. Next slide, please. That's uh, in general the, the, the situations in Indonesia uh, related to the, the current uh, pandemic. So let me uh, uh, try flashback uh, a couple of years ago or a couple of decades uh, ago. Indonesia and global food, uh, food trade. Indonesia was one of the states joining the World Trade Organization's WTO system since the beginning. The global trade system was starting January 1st, 1995. As uh, we all remember, in many countries, since they are joining uh, uh, the WTO, they will start beginning uh, 1995. Indonesia ratified the WTO as the outcome of Uruguay run with low number seven on uh, 1994. After that, in Indonesia had campaigned strong for trade liberalization and economic cooperation with other nations, regional and international level, such as APEC, APEC, AFTA, and other APAs. Next, please. Let's see. For a couple uh, 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 a few years back, yeah, we can see that Indonesia import uh, million tons of rice, which is in Indonesia, rice was uh, the main uh, diet for uh, many Indonesian uh, people. We can see how is uh, this the, the highest one is uh, on 2018, which is uh, uh, with the amount of 2.2 million tons. Next slide, please. As well as uh, with sugar, uh, Indonesia. For the last five years, we also import a lot of sugars, a million tons of sugars. Just uh, to give you some background, some con uh, and also contradic uh, contradictions. During colonial era, actually Indonesia one of the biggest uh, sugar productions in the world. But now, after uh, more than uh, seventy. 
five years of our independence, we are getting uh, as imported uh, sugar uh, countries. Uh, next slide, please. As well of uh, garlic. It's uh, become a, a, a huge uh, issue in Indonesia in the beginning of uh, COVID-19 pandemic that the, the price of garlic at the national market increasing up to 300% of 400%. Like my in the beginning of my presentation, I already uh, said because the pandemic is disturbing the transportations. So there's a, a, a lack of garlic uh, in the national market. So the, the price is uh, going up. Next, please. So what happened with the Indonesian uh, small farmers? This is, I'm using the, the data from the national statistic of Indonesia. We can see uh, year by year, month by month, the, the small farmers exchange rate in Indonesia is really, really minimum. Meanwhile, when we can see that the uh, the inflation is getting highest uh, compared to the, the exchange rate that or the price uh, taken by the farmers, that's the, the the situation. Next, and dealing with this pandemic, as also Walden already mentioned that uh, FAO. Uh, and others, uh, uh, international uh, institu institutions already said that the worry about the, the food production. Uh, can you uh, next uh, slide, please? And there is currently the, the big program uh, from uh, in Indonesia is a, a food estate dealing with the challenge of food supply near future as the impact of the pandemic COVID-19, Indonesia government is planning to set up a food estate in the central Kalimantan province. Around 165,000 hectares land will be used for it. And 6 billion rupiah is allocated in the pipeline uh, national budget. And food estate is a part of uh, the existing government set is national strategic project. So the meaning of this uh, national strategic uh, project means its uh, budget will be allocated from the central government and then uh, across uh, collaborations among, se uh, among several uh, ministry, and it will be uh, one of the top focus for the Indonesian uh, program. And just uh, today, during our uh, this webinar, Indonesian pres uh, president leaving to uh, Central Kalimantan province uh, this morning to take a look uh, with the, the, the locations and the, the program of the, the food estate. And like Salmali said, uh, the differences between uh, food sovereignty and food security in Indonesia, the, the food estate also will be led by a uh, ministry of uh, defense. So you can imagine that uh, the defense uh, ministry will take a lead uh, on food uh, production issues near in the future in Indonesia. Actually, there are several other programs related on food productions in Indonesia, such as uh, Sustainable Family Food Yard, fillet stock food bank, diversity local food, and etc. But not as the main project. Uh, I mean, here is it's mostly like a ministry level project or provincial level project, even uh, a district uh, level project. So this is not, and the budget is depend on uh, its uh, government. Uh, Next slide, please. And what happened? in Indonesia. The land ownership in Indonesia is really small. Majority small farmers only own 0 0.8 hectares per family. Meanwhile, 2,178 companies own more than 6 million hectares of land. I, I quote this from uh, Jamal uh, books on uh, 2014. 
and what the other situations uh, it's a big gap between farm gate price and retail uh, price so like we can also see from the uh, small farmers uh, exchange rate uh, like i said is also is con cannot afford with the the national inflation the the next is reforma agraria program is moving very slow and far from the target for the last five years there is a, a program of uh, on reforma agraria in indonesia but it's really really slow from the target is a uh, uh, 12 uh, million hectares uh, now it's almost uh, six years so it's not more than uh, three million hectares is already uh, distributed and it's also part of it uh, is linked to the shell forestry uh, system then among the indonesian populations 29.04 percent is working on agriculture sector and agriculture sector is contribute to 12.84 percent of national uh, pdb I quote this from uh, agriculture minister. So you can see that in Indonesia, uh, almost uh, 30 percent uh, Indonesian people are uh, living from the agriculture. And the, uh, the next is the week of trade and logistic system between village, district, and provinces. I think uh, Deepa already shared with us also what happened the situations in in India. So more or less, the, uh, that's what happened uh, as well in Indonesia. Next slide, please. And I would like to add here, uh, on 2000, uh, 2014, Indonesia uh, released uh, the new law, what we call is uh, a village law. So based on village law, or we call here in Bahasa is Undang Undang Desa, number six, 2014, for the last five years, from, uh, uh, 2000 to 2019, Indonesian central government already spent more than 257 billion rupiah fillet span. So fillet span is uh, the uh, fiscal uh, comes from uh, national governments goes directly to the the fillet level, and is organized and managed directly by uh, the village uh, community and the government. And in Indonesia, uh, our total village in Indonesia is uh, 75,000 in uh, 33 uh, province. For the last uh, five years, uh, those uh, village funds is, was used to build such uh, for small irrigations. Uh, I just would like to add some background here because for the last for the last uh, ten or fifteen years back, uh, the irrigation budget for irrigation is really really small, even is uh, nothing. Uh, maybe some of you also already knows about the 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 water structural uh, adjustment program that supported but by, by uh, World Bank at that time. So it's really small. But from the the village fund, uh, main, many uh, villagers decided and used uh, the the village fund to to prepare and to build the, the small irrigations in their uh, 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 food uh, area. And then uh, the village fund also used to clean water, uh, village road, small bridge, village market, and village own business unit water conservation and etc next slide please so uh, why i put uh, two two main uh, uh, program at the moment in indonesia this uh, the first is the the food state the food estate and then the second one is uh, the the rural development for the past five years so as you see Indonesians already uh, Indonesia government already spent hundreds uh, uh, billion uh, rupiah budget uh, for development in, uh, in the rural area but after the pandemic the solutions and the policy is uh, decided 
to set up a, a food estate. Our questions, and that's what also many civil society and also uh, a scholar, was why not uh, to ask the villagers, the small farmers, the fisher folk, uh, indigenous people to produce the food for their own first and then also for the, their neighborhood and then for uh, their village itself. Because we all, Indonesia already spent a lot of money. So uh, I mean in, the, in, in terms of infrastructure already there in the village. But later, later after the pandemic, the solutions uh, are, or the national program is the, the food estate. So let's uh, to the next uh, my presentation. A big lesson learned from that we have from COVID-19 pandemic, there is a strong need to recognize that the previous system and policy is driving people to, to the worst conditions, conditions out of the disease uh, itself. Need a fundamental change include on agricultural production and food system. And I quote here uh, from the, the, a guide to food sovereignty produced by Lafia Campesina on 2018 that food is fundamental need. Access to food is essential to human survive and basic human right. There is no one size fits all solution to merit of the complex problem we face in today's world. That's, uh, uh, I think it's very uh, short, but very fundamental uh, concern that we need to uh, bring it up uh, now uh, during the pandemic and onwards. Ensure every single family farm has enough land for their cultivation process and fiscal support should be provided by the state. It means reforma agraria should be taken as the main priority. Now, globally, reforma agraria is out of national policy and disappeared from many civil society concern. Why I put at the last point here about the reforma agraria, as we talked to, uh, in our webinar uh, today, is about food sovereignty. Without the reforma agraria, I think food sovereignty is far uh, that to achieve. So some uh, some precondition that we need also to consider about the food sovereignty that to make sure that it's every single family farm is, has enough land for their uh, agriculture uh, work that's it my presentation for our webinar uh, today thank you Thank <laughs> you.